Welcome to another tutorial in my tutorial series CAS Computer Algebra System for Mathematical Technical Applications in Civil Engineering using MATCAD Prime as application. This tutorial is um, part of lecture 3. Actually, lecture 3 starts with this uh, tutorial and here I would like to introduce in the topic using vectors in MATCAD Prime. Okay, at the beginning I have to mention uh, the explanation I will give here in this tutorial is actually the, um, how can I say, the computer scientific point of view. Yeah, for us, vectors are more or less only a data storage uh, to keep lots of values available in one variable. But vectors also have another meaning, they have a mathematical uh, physical meaning, uh, of course, you can use vectors to describe um, physical um, values which have a magnitude and a direction, for instance, forces, velocity, and so on. Uh, and this you have to take in consideration when it comes to operation with MADCAD, or no, with, with, in MADCAD with, with vectors. Yeah, and I have to mention this, but I will not give any explanation concerning this because this is not uh, my field. I'm not a mathematician or a physicist, so this I have to mention at the beginning. I will only explain how you can use vectors here in in MATCAD Prime. Okay, what will we do? At the, at the beginning, I will show you how you can uh, enter uh, statically uh, um, vectors in the MATCAD worksheet. In the second part, of the first step, I will show you how you can generate uh, vectors uh, dynamically. In the second step, I will show you how you can statically or dynamically uh, add or remove values from a vector. I will show you some uh, built-in functions with uh, what can you do, something like that. Then in the third uh, step, we come to mathematical operations with vectors. This here I have to I have to take in consideration that vectors can also have an, um, a mathematic physical um, meaning, yeah? and when it comes to the, those operations, we have to uh, take this in consideration. But anyhow, I will show you how you how this works here in MATCAD Prime, and uh, there's also some operations with uh, like uh, as product or cal calculation as. Uh, uh, um, a sum or product with, with, with one vector. This I can I will also show you. And at the end, I will show you how you can use vectors and units in the MATCAD worksheet. Okay, so far about the overview. Uh, and uh, I have also prepared a, a template this time so that we don't have to enter everything and we can focus only on the things I would like to show. Okay, let's start with the first step, uh, how can you enter a vector in a MATCAD spreadsheet? Uh, I would recommend uh, to at first to mention a variable. Yeah? And uh, the variable has a name. Yeah? And this you can do in a so-called mass, mass region. Let's enter this mass region at the beginning. And now let's give the variable a name. Let's call it V, which stands for vector uh, in my case now. And maybe um, give it also a subscript. S stands for static. And now let's use the definition symbol, yeah, which you find actually here. I use the shortcut, but you can also use it, uh, enter this from here. And now let's um, connect this variable with a vector in a static way. And for this, we have to go to another register card. And this is the register card matrices and tables that's here and here we are and here you can enter a vector yeah let's start how i think six values shall, shall this vector have here you see also a, a description yeah, now it's just only one value and then i can go up to six and maybe even more uh, up to 12 values but you can even if you need more then it's also possible i'll show you later Okay, let's start with a vector which for six values. And here let's enter some values, some numbers. Let's say 3, 6, 9, minus 12, 
and I use the uh, the number uh, part of my keyboard and minus 15 and here the last value will be minus 18. Okay, here you are. Those are the values in my vector. And um, now I have a variable which contains not just a simple number, uh, which we had so far when we didn't use any vectors. Now we have a variable which contains actually six numbers. Yeah. And if we arrange those numbers in, that, in, that, in such a way, then we call this vector. Uh, it's important to, to know that if you, if you want to know, if you want to have access to these uh, uh, values, you need an so called, here it is, an, in, uh, here, an index. Yeah. And uh, let's show it. Now let's, I would like to have access to this value here. And uh, I have to call the, the variable name. This was uh, v subscript s. Now I use the index, which is this one here. And uh, I have to, the index starts with one in my case. Yeah, so this is the first value, this is the second, this is the third. So to get this value, we have to, to use the numbers three here as an index. And now let's evaluate this. And here we are, we have number nine but this is depends uh, with which number you start your index or with which um, origin yeah you start this numbering here and that is actually um, you can change yeah if you go to uh, i think calculations yeah here there are some constants and here's the origin yeah in my case it's uh, i i prefer to use the origin one yeah, so this is my first value, the second, the third. But you can change it. You can start with zero. Yeah, you see, then this changes because now I don't start with number one. I start with zero. This is the, the zero value. This is the first value. This is the third value. And this is the, four, the fourth value. Uh, sorry, zero, one, two, three. This is the, the, um, the third value. Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah. So it is up to you how you prefer, but take in consideration if you start a blanket worksheet here in MadCat, if you go to new, yeah, then the default is always zero. Yeah, take this in consideration. I used to change this. I prefer one in man, in the most cases. Yeah, but um, if you use a blanket worksheet in MadCat, then it's always zero the origin. Okay, so far about this. And um, maybe let's leave this here and let's try something else. If you define another uh, vector, let's call this um, also v subscript s. But in this case, we use another way. Let's go back to matrices and tables. And here, let's make it this time in a horizontal way, not a vertical way, horizontal way. And uh, let's enter the values 3, 6, 9, minus 12, and minus 15, and minus 18. So now I get here this arrow. Why? Yeah. Uh, this was the first uh, way I described it. Now I, I renamed it. I created a new variable. Yeah. And now this is not guilty anymore. This is now guilty. But here I. I designed uh, the, ve the vector in another way. Yeah? But uh, in MATCAD, this is not a vector anymore. A vector is always vertically. Uh, if you um, this, uh, design a vector like this, then it's actually a matrix, not a vector anymore. Yeah? The horizontal uh, a vector has only one column in MATCAD. This is the golden rule you have always consider. Yeah? The golden rule is a vector should only have one column in in MadCat. The rows, the number of rows, does not matter, but it only ha uh, should have one column. Uh, if it has more than uh, one column, then it's a matrix, even though when it's it has just one row. So to have access to these values, I need actually two uh, indices, uh, indices, uh, indices uh, one for the row and one for the column. So. So I have to make to, to make it like this, and then it oh, 
when it should actually work. No, the first one is the row and the second one was the column. So it's like, now it's, we are right. And here, here we are. Did I, no, I changed, I have to change it back here, sorry. And now, uh, now it's, we have uh, one again. Yeah, so keep in mind also the origin. Yeah, and here, uh, the, so this is when you like to work with, uh, with vectors like this. If you don't want to, if you have a long vector, yeah, but you don't want to waste so many space, then you can do the, the, the following trick. Uh, you just make it, uh, design the vector like a matrix, but then you, uh, uh, you can um, transpose it here like this, and then you have a vector again. You, because now it is only one column. Yeah. You see, yeah. This is also another way how we can create a vector to save space, yeah. But don't forget to transpose it, yeah. And now, uh, if you want to see how it looks like, this is our vector. If I evaluate this, yeah, you see, looks like this. And if I remove this, then it's again it's a horizontal orientation, and then it's actually not a vector anymore; it's a matrix. Concerning matrix, I will do another tutorial. Now we just deal with vectors so far. So let's undo this and let's delete this. So these are the two possibilities how you can statically create a vector. Yeah. Um, this way or in this way. Okay. How can you dynamically generate a vector? Yeah. And um, let's. A uh, simple way is uh, you just type the name of the variable yeah, you would like to uh, assign with the vector. Let's call it V again for vector and subscript D1. Uh, and then you um, use an index for the last value of your vector, let's say six, yeah, again, uh, your vector should have six values, and then you only define the last value, like this. Yeah. And uh, if you look uh, how this vector looks like, let's have a look. So, and now let's transpose this again, because I don't have so much space here. So let's, that's why I would like to transpose it to see it uh, horizontal or, or oriented, and evaluate this, and then you see, that the default vector of an of a, the default value of an empty vector is always zero. There actually there are no empty vectors in MATCAD. This makes no sense. Yeah. So if you define only the last value of a vector, it could be also a 10, for instance, then all the empty parts will be zero. Yeah, like this. Yeah. But you can use this. Yeah. For instance, if you make a so-called zero vector, then in the second step, you can add some value to those zeros. For instance, uh, if you need a vector which only uh, should contain uh, the same values, yeah, you can create a zero vector at first, yeah, and then you can create um, a new vector. Let's call this VD2 and um, use your first vector with the zeros and add the number to you, uh, you would like to uh, replace this, <coughs> the zeros with. And now let's evaluate this. For this, I would like to copy it, save some time, and let's rename it. And here we are. We have a vector which has only uh, ones in it. You can it can also have tens or whatever. Yeah, this is the easiest way to create a dynamical. Uh, to create dynamically a vector which uh, has only the same values in it. Another way uh, to for the dynamical creation is to work with uh, a range variable. Yeah. And uh, for this, you have here in I mean this matrices and tables, you have the vector operation. Unfortunately, the range variable you don't find here. Yeah, uh, if you go to mass tab here and to operations, you'll find those uh, vector and matrix variables again. But here's also the range variable. I don't know why they didn't, uh, why they don't have it here. We will see. 
so, uh, and if the range variable for a vector, it's mostly this one here. Yeah, uh, you start with an with a start value and you have an end value, and the increment is always one. Yeah. So, uh, but at first I have to name it. So let's go to mass region. Normally it's called E or uh, I. And uh, now let's insert the range variable. Let's start with one, end up with six. So our vector has six values. Let's visualize this range variable to see how it looks like. This looks actually like a vector, but it isn't. Yeah, don't mix this up. Yeah, this is a range variable. Yeah, this which you can use to define your vector. So and now let's create a vector using this range variable with a formula. Let's call this v subscript d. And uh, now we have to use the index yeah, to to say that each value of this vector vector should create it in a certain way. Yeah, and for this, we can use a formula. Uh, it could be a mathematical operation, but it can also be a decision. Yeah, for instance, an uh, a if function. Yeah, you have this if function in MATCAD. I explained this already in some previous tutorials. So now that we can use it, we can make a condition. We could say, okay, if 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 is less than four, then it should be three. And if not, then it should be minus three, and then we can multiplicate this, for instance, with i. Let's evaluate this, and here we have created a, a vector dynamically. And uh, to make it uh, smaller or bigger, you just have to change this value here. Let's say ten now, and then this vector is it's it's getting bigger uh, or even smaller if you want. Yeah. So this is what I mean with dynamically creation. Yeah. Yeah, you use this uh, range variable and this formula to the to the create a vector dynamically. Here it's not so easy to choose. You you only enter the vector once, yeah, and then the the size of the vector and also the values are more or less fixed. Of course, you can change it. I will show you later, but you cannot easily adjust uh, the size with a parameter like here. Yeah, here you can just have to change this number and then. Uh, or this sorry, or this formula, uh, and this will change uh, the values or the size of a vector. That's why I call this dynamically, and this I call statically. Yeah. For instance, if you have a worksheet and you in this worksheet you have a certain parameter, and and with this parameter you can later adjust uh, the values and the size of a vector in a sheet yeah, dynamically and yeah, without that. That you have to go to this uh, this register card and do some of those operations here. Okay, and uh, yeah, I mentioned this already. Uh, how can you statically or dynamically add or remove values? Yeah, uh, and let's start with the static uh, static way. And uh, yes, copy this vector here. Let's take this one to save some space. And uh, let's show you how you can make this smaller or bigger yeah in a static way it means that you have to use those uh, operations here uh, manually yeah you see if you go to matrices and tables then you see here you can insert a, a, a row yeah or you can insert a row above or below yeah the, for instance if it's now we talk about only vectors yeah so we need actually this yeah if your vector is it's horizontally orientated yeah if we would do it here, then we have to use rows. Yeah, like let's show it here. Maybe I would like to have here a value. Uh, then I click here and then I say insert above. So then I have here some space and I could add a, a value here. Let's undo this. If I like to have maybe some value at the end here after 18, then I have to say below. And now I can uh, add uh, more values and so on. Let's undo this. And um, yes, here, because we have transposed this, it's actually a horizontal orientated vector. So we have to work with columns. It's the same way yeah, here. You can add some columns or um, or you can also remove. Yeah, here you can remove it. Yeah, and also um, some values. Or you can clear the cells. Yeah, it's also possible. Yeah, then you uh, you leave the, the, the space yeah, for a value, but you only clear the 
the value. Yeah? But here you will delete the column, the whole column, not just the value. This is how you can change a vector um, statically, yeah, using those commands here. Uh, how can you, you can uh, how can you do this uh, dynamically? Yeah, dynamically, you can again use a range variable. Let's define again a range variable. This time I use the shortcut. Uh, I would say start with the index four and end up with the value six. Let's look how this range uh, variable looks like. Yeah, it's we have four, five, and six. And now again, we can use a formula for the, 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 to uh, create a, such a vector. Let's say v subscript d. And now again, we have to use our index for the, um, here is the index. And this is actually i. And now again, let's use a formula. Maybe again, this uh, condition. And we can say if i is less than six then we should um use v b d uh, and now let's again the index here's our index where is it here e plus eins uh, and um, otherwise let's use the value 21 minus 21 and uh, now we create a new vector actually from the old one and this looks like this this is smaller yeah because uh, we use this subscript here yeah so we only change the last three values yeah, from our vector here no from this one this is the v uh, vd this one here yeah no vd one actually what is here this one here on this um so and we worked so what did we do yeah we created a new vector from the old one which contains the uh, the last two values of the old one this one here and it uh, which has a new value the 20 minus 21 yeah, and this you can do in such a formula if you uh, like to uh, shift or exchange values from an already existing a vector using a range variable yeah, for a certain range yeah, inside your vector could be at the beginning at the end or in the middle yeah, it could be also you can also make a step range yeah, if you say um, maybe you would like to change only every second value then you can make a range like this maybe give you an example here let's define a range variable let's call it j in this case and you can use this step range here if you go mass step to here this one and then you can say, okay, let's start with the first value and then with this third, let's say 10. And if you visualize the values, it looks like this. And then you would, uh, you would uh, take the first value from a vector, the third one, the fifth one, the seventh and the ninth. Yeah. And so you will skip uh, every second value yeah, from your vector. Yeah? You can also, this is called step range. Yeah? You can also use something like that. Okay, what else have I prepared? Okay, I can create a new vector, call this call it dynamic vector, and use at the beginning my static vector here from the beginning, which I called VC, uh, VS. So like this, and uh, let's have a look. How 3D looks like it's more or less the static vector, and maybe I would like to change um, uh, only the last three values for my vector. Maybe I would like to make them smaller. Yeah. And how you can do this? Yeah. You can use mathematical operations. That's yeah, the easiest way. But uh, if you would like to use only the, some certain values, yeah, then you have to use your index here or your range variable and if i make this uh, calculation like this if i say okay uh, v d index i uh, let's define it and then 
use our alter vector i and here take only uh, subtract three and now let's evaluate this uh, what you see now oops oh the range is not valid because there i'm afraid that here we have this is too big one two three four five low let's make it like this and here we are so we changed maybe if it to let this so i could also create a new um, range variable but i was too lazy so i took the old one anyhow so i changed the the last three values of this vector here yeah, minus three only the, this uh, i did not change what you see here it's only the result of this uh, operation yeah but if you like to see the whole vector then you have to make something like this let's uh, 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 call the variable name and now evaluate this and here's the whole vector yeah? You see only the last three values, and here's the whole vector. Now you see, I did not, I only changed the last three values, but not the uh, for the first and the second value. Uh, again, with the range variable, you can uh, you have access to certain values of your vector. Okay, and uh, yes, how you can uh, this was a, a way how you can change values in your vector yeah, dynamically yeah, using the range variable yeah, only certain values yeah, with the index yeah, you have access to the values but now the question is how you can uh, change the size of a vector and for this you can use um, some built-in functions uh, let's create a new vector let's call it vd3 and uh, define it and to change sizes of the vector we have certain uh, built-in functions you find them if you go to i think here are the functions yeah here here are the functions for vectors or for for matrices as well not only vectors yeah and there is for instance a function which is called sub matrix this one here and this you can also use for a vector yeah um, and if you like to have a, a new vector which comes from the old uh, v subscript uh, s, yeah. And now we have here some parameters. Yeah? And the first one defines. Maybe let's open the. The explanation to this function and it's easier to explain if you uh, like to see the uh, the online help yeah, just press f1 uh, here just click at it and then press f1 on your keyboard and here we are here's the online explanation this is our function and here you see this is uh, the in uh, the the uh, for the rows yeah and this is for the columns yeah? and if we have a vector we actually have we only talk about rows and not about columns uh, and uh, so here we are yeah so we, let's say we have the first uh, we, we would like to have only the, uh, the the from this vector those three values and the others we would like to skip yeah to, to, to remove then uh, we start from the first row and end up at the third one and the column is, is always one and if you talk about vectors now let's evaluate this and it looks like this this is our new vector which only has the first three values and the other ones are removed uh, you can do it also another way let's copy this and here change a little bit maybe we would we would like to have only those two values yeah and the, we would like to remove the, the first three values this stays the last two parameters we it's the same yeah because it's only a vector the columns is always one and now let's start with five with the fifth value and end up with the six no with the fourth and end up with the six value so oops out of the five not six we have only five values minus 15 and 18. so here we are this you can also do like this 
another way is um, maybe you would like to. Uh, um, this is a way how you can make a vector shorter, yeah, to remove values, but how you can maybe add some values to a vector. And for this, you can use another built in function. And uh, let's open this online help here again. And this is stack actually. Yeah. With this, you can uh, add some uh, vectors uh, at each other. Yeah, you see like this. And uh, let's show it here. Let's call this new vector v subscript d number four and uh, insert the stack function. I would you can type it, yeah. But if the, if you're not so familiar with this function. I would um, recommend to uh, to enter the function from here because then you have this access to the online help, yeah, and you also have this preview and you know how many parameters this function has. And uh, so let's you see it. Then you have the placeholders for the parameter already, and you uh, and you will not forget any. Okay. At first, yeah, maybe maybe we can. Let's only stack those two. Uh, vectors above each other yeah so we can take here the this function the sub matrix and uh, this one so we will stack this vector no this vector above this one here and uh, this is not necessary we don't we only would like to stack two vectors above each other and here you are yeah so this is the first vector, and now we we put this vector at uh, above the first vector, like this. Yeah. Of course, you can use other vectors as well. Yeah. So actually, we have the original vector again. Yeah. Okay. This is a way how you can dynamically change values of a vector or change the size, remove or add uh, values from a vector. Now let's come to the mathematical operations with vectors. Uh, at first, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about the start index or about the indexes because they are quite important if you if you have if used them already. Yes, here and and so on. Uh, but here, let's talk about a little bit about the index. And um, I mentioned already uh, that uh, actually the index is always um, depend on the origin yeah what is your setup here yeah i prefer mainly one there are some use cases when i also use zero uh, but uh, normally i prefer one and uh, but it's up to you yeah or uh, if you would like to uh, formulate it generally yeah you can also make something like this yeah you can insert here for a start index a mass region and you get, can define your start index like i subscript s, and then don't type one or zero. You can also use uh, the, 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 the system constant, which is called origin. Uh, and then you automatically take the value which is set up here. Yeah, now it's one. If you change it to zero, then you have zero here. Yeah, this is also a way how you can be independent. Of the setup here, yeah. If you like to, if you would like to design an algorithm uh, where you don't know if the user prefers one or zero, and then you can use this uh, general um, uh, definition here in your worksheet. Yeah. When it comes to the end index, this is the start index with which you would like to to start, and then you normally you for the range variable you also need an end index. Yeah. Where the uh, what is the last index of your vector? And there are also some possibilities. Yeah, the um, best possibility I would recommend is the following. Let's go back to mass and insert here for the mass region to define the end index. I would call it I subscript E for end. And um, then go to the matrices and tables. By the way, you find those functions also if you go to functions. And here are also vectors, matrices. Yeah, if you, you can also find those functions. And if you go to all functions, then you have the function browsers. And if you go to vectors and matrices here, and then you find them also from here. Yeah, 
can have access to those functions from here. Yeah, this is just uh, I wanted to mention. Yeah, and uh, okay, uh, I would like to introduce a function uh, with which you can find out uh, the last index. Here, I have to click inside this mass region. Now they are not grayed out anymore. And the now the, the name of this function is last. Yeah. And last actually um, only evaluates or, uh, or the, this function determines which is the last number of your index. Uh, sorry, which is the index or the number of your last value in a vector. Yeah. Let's insert the name of the vector. Let's take the static vector from the beginning, Vs. And now let's evaluate this. And this is actually five. Let's have a look how Vs looks like here. Vs. And here it's our vector. And you see one, two, three, four, five. The last index here is five. So there's also another possibility which you can use. And uh, let's uh, edit here and uh, go to mass region. And here let's. Uh, I just show you how it works. Yeah, I don't uh, uh, define a new variable for the last index. Uh, and this is the function length. Uh, let's go back to mat vector matrices. And this is the function length. This gives you the length of a vector. And it's also five. Yeah. And um, yes, and you might think, uh, OK, I can use this one or this one it doesn't matter yeah this is true uh, as long as your origin is one if the origin isn't not one maybe it's zero let's go back to calculation here and change it to zero then it's not the same anymore yeah and you see i have already some problems here yeah so uh, so it's always uh, that's why i always recommend the uh, the function last because the last always works yeah here if you use the function length uh, it's still five yeah because it uh, this tells you the last index which is the number of the last index yeah this is actually four in this case this function actually tells you how many values you have in this vector yeah and this is still five yeah so if you change the uh, origin from one to zero the values are uh, are the same yeah they will not change but the number of the last index and the the index not uh, numbering this is changing yeah it will start with zero and not with one anymore yeah? and that's why i wouldn't recommend to use this yeah it's it depends on you yeah if you use always the origin one then you can take this or this yeah uh, but um i prefer actually this function to find out the last index this tells you only how many values this uh, vector contains. Another way you can also use, and uh, let's, I can, I can mention this, but it's actually not so common. Yeah, uh, Let's insert again a mass region. And here we go to matrices and tables. And here we have our functions. And here there is the row function, which gives us the numbers of rows this vector has actually yeah and let's evaluate this and here we are with five it's the same like length in our case yeah and uh, you can also but this is just for fun uh, determine the amount you can also use the calls function uh, but which gives you actually the um, sorry here let's we have to go back to matrix and tape tables and here are the functions and there's also the calls function which gives you actually the amount of columns uh, but the vector actually has no columns but if you transpose the vector then you can also use the calls function which is actually not so a good idea but it still works yeah you can if you transpose the vector yeah then then the the uh, the columns will become rows and then you can also use the, the rows function but it's just the way what you can also do i would recommend to use this function yeah, to find out the last index of a, of a vector because then you are also independent of the start region let's uh, of the origin yeah let's go back to the let's let's, let's uh, 
change this back to one. And uh, yes, now let's define the range variable. Yeah, and you can make this statically how I did it already before. Yeah, I just start with with the first value and then the last one. But this is static. Yeah, it means I I cannot dynamically change it. And this is also depends on the origin. Yeah, because if the origin is one, then this is okay. But this, if if I change this to zero, then this is not okay anymore. Yeah, because then the first value is actually not one; it is zero. Yeah, so this is. Easy to understand, easy to read, but not uh, a general uh, description. Uh, if you like to have it more uh, general, then you can use it another way to this uh, to define the range variable. Let's insert the mass region, and you can say, uh, let's start from origin. No, let's define it as a, a range variable. I define Origin, comma, origin plus one, and it should go to last uh, value of the vector. This is actually a general description of our range variable. I can show it to you here. It does not matter if you if the origin is zero or one. Let's visualize. Our range variable. This is the range variable when it's when it's the origin is one. If I change this to um, to uh, zero here, then it's still working. You see zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Yeah, this is a general this, uh, way how you can define a range variable from the first value to the last value, independent of the origin. This uh, formulation works with the origin is zero and also with the origin is one as you see yeah but the disadvantages is not so easy to read yeah and if you if there is no need that you uh, that you, that you have to define the range variable in a general way then you can also use this one yeah this is up to you this this, this is uh, depends it uh, it depends on the purpose on your worksheet I, but i wanted to introduce this formulation because sometimes it might be necessary that you uh, design an algorithm which is independent from the origin setup of the later user of your worksheet. So, okay, and uh, the last possibility, I, you can also use the uh, variables here you defined already before. Yeah, then it's not so uh, big anymore. Uh, so long, it's not long anymore. Not, and for this, let's insert the mass region and here I. Uh, is defined as i uh, start. It should start with i subscript s and should go go until i subscript e. Yeah, and this is the same here. And if we change our calculations to zero, then it looks like this. Yeah, this you can also do. Yeah. And uh, yeah. By the way, you can if if there is if there is no need to set up the second value for any case, you can also remove this and make it a little bit shorter here. It's, uh, then the increment is automatically one. Yeah, you can here again. Does not matter how it looks like. Okay, so far about the how you can create an index variable or range variable um, depending on the origin and on the last value of your vector and now let's do some operations and uh, let's start with our s vector which looks like this and now maybe let's add some values to this vector and then the easiest way is to we did it already just maybe three uh, add the number three to each value of your vector, then it looks like this. Yeah, you see here I have those uh, values in my vector, and now if I use this formula, then here uh, a, a, a Madcat will add three to each value uh, of your vector. So this was a, a, a addition, 
uh, we can also make it uh, a division like this. We subscript S and then now let's divide it with three and let's evaluate this. Then it looks like this. Yeah. Let's make a multiplication in the same way three times V S and evaluate this. Then it looks like this. And maybe square this. So here we let's see our vector v subscript s and here let's go to the mess tab and here we have actually the uh, explanation and let's say to the power of two and then evaluate this and here we are. Yeah. So this is actually there are some mathematical operations with a scalar uh, vector and scalar. And now what happens if we uh, make some operations with, with two vectors? And uh, at first we have to take in consideration the vectors should have the same size. Yeah. And um, okay, let's, uh, uh, let's assume they have the same size. So again, let's start with our, with this vector here and make some mathematical operations with it, with the values of this vector. And um, yeah, let's start with a multiplication. Maybe let's um, take this vector, this vector and uh, multiplicate it with itself like this. And let's evaluate this. And now it looks like this, we get a scalar, yeah? And uh, this is what I mentioned already at the very beginning, as yes? we have to take in consideration that uh, in, in mathematics and also in physics, vectors have a special meaning and also the operations, uh, they have also a special meaning. Uh, and, um, and actually what happens now is that it's, uh, it's, it's multiplicates uh, each value with itself, uh, three times three is nine, six, uh, is uh, six uh, times six is 36 and so on. And then it sums uh, every value up. Yeah. This is because uh, the so-called vector product or, or whatever. Yeah. And um, so if you, this is the same, like if you would like, uh, if you would make a sum, yeah, for instance, like this, and here take our, oh, we can take it from here, just copy it. And we get the same result. So, if we don't want this, yeah, that the values will be summed up at the end, then we can uh, make the same operation uh, vectorized. Let's copy this and uh, let's, let's uh, mark this yeah, with your mouse. Uh, and now it's marked, and now we use a special operator, and this is this one vectorization uh, and now uh, it makes every single um, value yeah it makes uh, three as a three times three is nine six times six is 36 and nine times nine is 81 and so on yeah for this if you don't like this uh, special vector multiplication yeah then you have to use this vect vectorization um, Operator, and then you get the normal multiplication, yeah, with your with the values of your two vectors. Okay, but make sure in our case that uh, if you make something like this, that the values, uh, the vectors should have the same size, yeah. And uh, what else have I? Oh yeah, there's another product um, which has a, a special mathematical meaning, and uh, because we we use this product here, uh, this. With the before vector multiplication, this is was vector vector multiplication, and then we have here this cross product. Yeah, a cross product. Uh, if you make a cross product with our two vectors, uh, in our case it's zero yeah, because the vector is equal. Here, if we make a cross product of the vector with itself, yeah, then it looks like this, and we get zero. Oh, this is the, okay, the, the vector is too long because, okay, the cross product only works in the three-dimensional space. 
now we have too many values we have to look for a vector do you have a vector here which has only three values here this one let's take this one and like this oh it's still did i change this let's make a check no two values why do i have only two actually three values why it's ah here i i made it again and now i have let's name this here we name this to five and it's our cross product yeah i told you already it's zero um just i actually i, I didn't want to give a mathematical expression maybe so far uh, what is this cross product what's the meaning of the cross product um the cross product is if you have two vectors maybe this one with another color for another vector maybe this one here uh, no it's not a good idea to paint it in that way because i need a perspective uh can i where's the eraser okay let's undo this um let's make it like this here the pen let's say we have a vector like this and then vector like this and this might be uh, and if we make a cross factor product with let's 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 name them this is might be a a and this is b and if you make a cross product from a and b um then we get we get uh, the the normal vector to this plan between those two vectors uh, this one uh, that's why it is it only works in space yeah in t-dimensional space yeah that's why the I, I i get troubles when i when the vector has more than three uh three values uh, and this is the meaning for the cross product um if you if you need this for your if for some physical calc or, or mathematical calculations yeah then you can find the cross product here where is it here mass operations this is the cross product and of course if the vector is equal then there is no normal um then the, the, then the, there can be a normal vector to this because if there is the if the vector are is, is the same yeah then there is no plan uh, between yeah because here if this if this is the same vector then you cannot have a normal vector that's why it's zero it's only at this point here okay uh, so far about this yeah if you um yeah if you if you want to have some values then we have to change the vector let's copy this here and maybe make some parentheses around it and add three to change let's change this vector here a little bit and now we get also an an result yeah this is the cross product yeah i actually don't need this for my uh, lessons because i'm not uh, I, I i use vectors more uh, as i said already right at the beginning as a data storage yeah and uh, i have some examples in my lessons when i when i use vectors in uh, for physical physical um for physical quantities like forces uh, or velocity or displacement and so on then of course we can use this but normally uh, in computer science uh, lectures we don't need this yeah but we have to take this in consideration consideration that's why i mentioned this here so um what can we do if the vectors have different size yeah then again we need a, a index a range variable again i call this uh, i and i start from the origin let's use a general definition of this range variable and to the last value of my vector uh, of the smallest vector yeah, because if i have vector of diff uh, with different size i can only uh, uh, make operations with uh, those values of the smallest vector yeah maybe let's take uh, let's keep this v 
3. Let's take this one here. That is VD3, maybe. And um, yeah, and then let's visualize the range variable. Yeah, it looks like this. Now let's visualize VD3. How did it look like? Like this. And now let's take another vector which is longer, maybe with VS. Looks like this. And now if we would like to multiplicate, uh, yeah, make, make a multiplication, uh, the, the three values of this vector with the first three values of this vector, yeah, then we can use this index or this range variable here and um, make the, a new vector. Let's call this VS or VD7 already. And uh, oh, we have to define it with our index. Don't forget this. Yeah, it's I. And then um, this is V D three index I times S index I. I could just V S index I. And here is our our I. So now let's visualize this. How does this new vector looks like? We have to remove e, uh, i, and here we are. Yeah. And what uh, what did we do? Yeah, we multiplicated this value with this one, this value with this one, and this with this one, and this we skip because here in this vector there is no value we can um, multiplicate with this one because this is, is too short. Yeah. So with the range variable again, you can also if you want uh, multiplicate. Uh, vectors with different uh, lengths, but uh, the the smallest vector, of course, um, will uh, define the operation or using the range variable. So now let's talk about the um, operations with one vector, with a sum or with a product. Yeah, and um, we you can define a range variable outside. This operation, if you want, if you, I will show you. It's not necessary, but let's do this. And um, yeah, uh, let's start with the range variable for this operation. Let's call it again i, and it should start. Let's make again a general uh, definition origin, yeah, which is on independent of the origin. It should start with origin and should go to the last value of our vector we would like to use in this operation. And now I show you some different notation. Uh, yeah, let's start with a mass region and then we go to operations. And here we have the product or the sum. It's actually uh, concerning the, uh, the, uh, the workflow. It does not matter. I will use the sum because it, may, it might be easier to, uh, to follow. If, so let's, yeah, let's use the sum operator here. And here you see the placeholder. Uh, you can define actually the range variable for this operation inside this operator yeah, using those placeholder here. Uh, here we can say i uh, equals, and this time we have to you have to use the equal signs, equal one. It should start at one, uh, and then you can define uh, where sh it should end up. We have here in this five values, so it should go up to five. And here now let's mention the vector we would like to sum. Uh, up, uh, it's called V subscript S. Don't uh, small uh, uh, small letter S, and then don't forget the index I. And now let's evaluate this. And here we are. For instance, if I change here the range, let's say only to the third value, uh, then you see it, it changed this value. Yeah, you have also access uh, how many values you would like to to sum up. Yeah, you can. I think you can also change the start value. Also works, and um, yeah, you can uh, use the the parameters, the placeholder for the parameters, uh, uh, as part of this operator. Yeah, but you can also define the parameter outside. Yeah, I already defined uh, 
a range variable, and I can use this also in this parameter if I don't want to do this. Uh, because if you if you if you like to use this general expression, then it's not so nice if you write it down in this placeholder here. Yeah, then it's then you can uh, define a range variable outside and just reuse it in this operator. And um, let's show this how this works. And again, use the sum operator and just here uh, this placeholder here. Give the name of your range variable. This is i here, and then let's copy this. And let's evaluate this. Here we are, minus 15. Yeah, it's the same like here. Uh, and uh, but if you want, you can also type such a general expression in the, into the placeholder. It's I can also show you that's also possible. And um, here again. And let's start here with i equals please use the equal sign yeah, in this case not a definition symbol in this case it should be a normal equal sign on your keyboard and then origin and here i can say to last s and then here let's copy this again and then let's evaluate this so this expression is also possible anyway, this is i think this is easier to read yeah if you if you if you create a worksheet for documentation purpose, uh, then this might be better because it is quite easy to understand. This is not so easy to understand there yeah, for some outsiders. Yeah, if you don't know MATCAD, then such an uh, operation is not so easy to read. Yeah, then then it's but this the advantage of this uh, expression is that uh, it's a general um, formula. This means if you change the origin. Let's show it. If you change the origin to zero, this still works. Yeah, this is not working anymore. Yeah, so it's up to you what it's more important uh, for you. So there's also another uh, form. Yeah, if you if you have a vector yeah, and you would like to sum up all the values, yeah, you can also make such a You can make this abbreviated expression. In this case, uh, here use this sum operator and uh, skip all those two parameters. Just uh, write the name of the vector and evaluate this, and then every value will be uh, summed up. Uh, of course, then you have no access. Yeah, where it should start and where it should end. Yeah, but if you don't need this, yeah, you want to. Uh, sum up all the values anyhow, then this uh, up abbreviated form might be useful for you. Okay, um, you can also use a matrix notation to sum up a vector if you need. Uh, uh, let's show this as well. Uh, let's insert the first the mass region here in this text region, and then again the sum operator. Here we are. Where is it here? And uh, okay, let's make this easy to read formulation here. And let's up to five. And if you have um, for any for some cases you have a matrix. So for this, let's just transform transpose this vector to simulate matrix. No, this was the wrong uh, operator. Need transpose here. Here it is. Transpose this vector, and now we have a made uh, a, a horizontal, uh, yeah, a horizontal orientated vector. And here, let's define it with the index. Then we have we have to say, okay, this is the row number one, uh, and here, this is our i, and then it works also with such a vector. Yeah, let's show you what I mean when I just transpose this vector. Here, this is our vector, and if I transpose it, then it looks like this, and then it's actually not a vector anymore for MATCAD. And that's why, if for any case you do you want to to make a um, such a of a kind of operation with such a kind of vector, then you can use this expression here. And um, again, you can also use a 
a general uh, formulation. Yeah, if you prefer this, I can also show. Oops, that have I wanted to copy this. Let's copy this. Okay, let's 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 enter it again. So operator here, and how does it look like if if you want like to have a general um, expression? Let's start with the origin. So we have to say i equals origin. Then you have to to say okay, if, which you would like to end up this if it's uh, if it's a matrix, then it's not so easy to evaluate the last value. Uh, you have to make, have to use such kind of formula. I have to uh, evaluate the calls, the columns of the matrix. For this, I need a transport, trans the, the, the transpose vector to create the matrix, and then I have to add an origin. Minus one to it, and this now we should copy here. And here we have to replace the one with origin and evaluate this. And here we are. Yeah, and the, the advantage is if you use such an expression, then you are independent of the origin. Let's test this here. Let's change it to zero, and then it should. Also work, yeah. This is not working anymore yeah, because it's not a general expression. This only works if the origin is one. Here, this expression, this is generally formulated, so it also works with the origin zero. Okay. Uh, what you also can do is you can use, uh, you can make such uh, operation uh, uh, dependent on a condition, uh, on a condition. Um, uh, let's show this. Yeah, maybe you would like to uh, to sum up only certain values uh, of your vector. Maybe only the values which are greater than zero. Yeah, then you can do this in, a, in this way. Let's show it. Uh, let's go to math. Use our sum operator here. And now let's use a, an easy way to formulate it. Let's use i and here we use an if function. Here's our condition. We say f subscript s index i should be greater than zero. And then what shall we do then? Then we should take this value in consideration. Don't forget the index. If not, then in our case it's a multiplic uh, it's a it's a uh, addition. Then it's then we should uh, consider zero in this addition, and and zero in, in in an addition makes no difference, and that's why it will only evaluate um, the values greater than zero. Let's have a look. Where's our vector? So it will only uh, three plus six plus nine is eighteen. Yeah. Okay, and this is less than zero, and that's why it will not evaluate that there. So it takes actually zero instead of those two values. This you can also do with a product. Let's copy this. Yeah, if it's not a multiplication. Yeah, so let's use this product and delete this. And here our i. And uh, but in a product, yeah, you have uh, in a in a in an addition, zero makes no difference. Yeah, in a product, zero makes a huge difference. Then we should use one instead of zero. And in this case, it will multiply three times six times nine. Yeah, and then you get uh, one hundred sixty-two. Okay, so uh, I have shown you how you can make an um, operation depending on a condition and uh, yeah and then it's uh, maybe in the last possibility i would like to show here is maybe you don't want to uh, sum up not every everywhere you 
or a value in a certain range, maybe you would sum, uh, you would like to sum up every second value, yeah, or maybe only every second positive value and so on, yeah. How you can make something like this, and for this again, you need a, a range variable, yeah, and a certain. Uh, again, let's this time let's use the general expression and origin. Um, if you are a computer scientist, sorry, yeah, this was normally uh, a computer scientist. If you develop some work genes, uh, you, you prefer a general expression. Well, why? The reason is that you can easily reuse it. Yeah, and that's why I I mentioned this general expression. Uh, because you can reuse such an expression in any worksheet, yeah, uh, independent if the origin is zero or uh, or one, yeah, and that's why for a computer scientist they normally prefer general expressions in their coding. Yeah, let's uh, formulate it that way, uh, and that's why I introduced those expressions here. But uh, for uh, but it's up to you in your worksheets what you what uh, what uh, you prefer. So okay, last we. Uh, S. So this is a general expression for the origin, but here in this case, uh, let's visualize it. This uh, we we start with with origin. Yeah, this is one. Yeah, and then we would like to um, skip the next value and uh, and we'll continue with the third value and so on. So every second value we will skip. Yeah, and then let's visualize the original vector to make it easier for you to follow what happens here. And now let's sum it up. Yeah, uh, let's sum up only every se uh, second value, so we can. Yeah, let's um, the sum operator. Let's use our index range variable, and then we as oh shit, we as subscript i and evaluate this, and here we are. So it's. Uh, by the way, I think we can also visualize this how it looks like if we use our eye. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually this is the original value, and if we this is this is the original vector, and if you use uh, the original vector with this certain subscript we created, then we on, actually only um, Use those three values, and if we sum them up, three plus nine plus minus eighteen, we get minus sixteen. Uh, six minus six. So now let's we can use this also together with a condition yeah, to make it more sophisticated. So let's copy this here, and maybe let's copy this one here. So we can use this. Oops, did not work. Let's try it again. Yeah, here we are. And uh, we would like to use greater than zero. It's actually the more or less the same formula like we have used here. Yeah, and then actually we only uh, say with this condition, we only like to sum up uh, values which are positive or greater than zero. Yeah, and so that's why uh, instead of minus 18, we use in this addition zero, which makes no change. And that's why we only in this example we would uh, we would uh, only add try um, and nine and then we get twelve. Yeah. So you can also mix those two ways. Yeah. This a certain step range. Yeah. With a certain condition to make su such sophisticated operations if you want to. Okay. The last part will be how you can use uh, uh, vectors, not matrices, vectors and Units together, and uh, yeah, you can simply add a unit to an already existing vector. Maybe uh, I have created here some vectors, and um, maybe they take a short vector here. Let's take this one here, VD7, and get back here. Take a new vector, I call it VEC v v Subscript u for unit, and then if let's define it, take an old vector without a unit. This was this one, and now just add the unit. Yeah, you can uh, multiplicate it with the unit like this. Yeah, just enter the unit. But if you enter the unit, uh, make sure 
that it's getting blue. Yeah, then it's uh, then Madcat shows you, oh, okay, it's a unit. If it's not getting blue and it's uh, it is uh, uh, it stays uh, black, then it's actually not a unit anymore. It's a variable name. Yeah, so please be careful. Yeah, uh, if you want to avoid such kind of troubles, you can also add a unit. Uh, if you click here, yeah, maybe I just uh, let's remove this, and then you go here to units and. Here we are, and if you go to uh, forces, and here you have also Mecha Newton, and this is the the safest way yeah, to add a unit. But you can just type the unit if you prefer. And now you can I can change the unit to kilo Newton, and here we are. So this is one way how you can add a unit to an already existing vector. Uh, how you can remove the unit? Uh, this was uh, maybe you, you don't want to have a unit uh, and a, uh, connected with a vector anymore. Yeah, this is also um, quite easy. Just create a new vector, this time without a unit. Let's call it v subscript u unit less ul. And uh, let's define it. We take a vector with a unit and just divide it by the unit you like to have. Yeah, And um, if you want to, want to have uh, this unit, this u vector, which has the values in kilonewton, then you have to type this. Yeah, and let's evaluate this, and it looks like this, yeah. But you can also change it to mega Newton or to Newton, yeah. Then the new value, uh, the new vector looks like this, yeah. It has no unit anymore, and uh, and here you can also set up how you how you would like to to make this um, this uh, this process, yeah. If you would like to have this new vector actually in you in in mega Newton, in kilo Newton, or in Newton, yeah. Of course, without the unit. Okay. Uh, it's not matrix. Uh, this is actually a vector. Let me change this. So how can we create a static vector with a unit? Yeah, maybe you want to create a new vector which should have a unit already from the very beginning. Uh, okay, let's call it VU for unit. Let's define it. Now let's create here the static vector. Go to vector matrices. Let's make a vector with three values. Let's enter some values, 5, 8, and 9. Uh, click behind with the cursor, with the arrow keys on my mouse, uh, on my keyboard. I uh, I press them until this cursor blinks here behind this vector so that I'm outside the vector, but uh, still in, inside this mass region. Yeah, and here, when this cursor blinks here, I can add my unit. I can do it from here as I... I've shown you already before, but I can also type the unit simply. Sorry, simply in. Uh, let's say I would like to have kilonewton, like this. No, the big capital N. And here we are. This is our vector with the with a already which which we created and which has already a unit. Again, make sure that if you type it, that it's turning blue. Yeah, otherwise it's not a unit. Okay, how we can create a dynamic vector with a unit? Yeah, this is also quite easy. Uh, I use a range variable. Um, this is I here. When I use this one, I, I can't use it. So make let's make a range variable. A new one, I make a short uh, formulation for this. Let's start with 1 and with 5. And here now let's create a vector which uses this index for this we need the index here i and a formula to create to calculate the values of this ve of this vector let's say i plus five and now let's just and uh, add the unit uh, to this here are the values uh, calculated and here i add the unit and here we are maybe we uh, and now let's show how this vector looks like and here's our vector which we have here calculated and let's change the units to this and now it looks like this yeah this is actually a dynamically created vector with a unit and uh, yeah at the end there's also a nice way which we use actually quite often uh, if you want to use uh, if you want would like to create uh, several vectors at once like a table yeah, then you can 
use this one here, insert a table. Let's say we would like to have uh, three vectors with uh, three values. And yeah, it looks like this. Then you have here a placeholder for the name of this vector. Let's call it v1. For the first vector, v2 for the second, and v3 for the third one. Let's add the unit. This is meter. This is seconds, maybe, and this is Newton. And then we can add some values, 5, 8, 5, and 10. Maybe this is also 10, and this is 5. Let's say this is minus 5, and this should be 9. And here, let's say 50 and 7. Also some values. And uh, now let's have a look how they look like. So I, I created actually three vectors uh, at once yeah, using this uh, special table with a unit. And uh, to, to visualize those vectors here, let's um, take number one. And, and here we are, you see this is our vector uh, in meter. And of course you can change its unit to centimeter if you prefer. And here again, this is our second vector, which is actually in seconds. And if I can change this here now in hours, oops, no, I cannot. That's seconds at first, seconds. And now uh, let's have a look if I maybe time, where's time? Hour, let's look here. Time, ah, hour is not, it's uh, uh, HR. You see, yeah, yeah, now it works, yeah. And, um, and we, the third vector, let's do also this one. And here we are, let's use mechanism if you want. Yeah, this is also a nice way. Uh, this we actually in for our uh, calculations in our. In, in my field, for the examples I uh, use in this course, we, this expression we use quite often yeah, to create uh, several vectors at once with some physically um, um, physically quantities, and uh, yeah, and then you can create such a table. Okay, so far about the introduction concerning vectors in MATCAD. Yeah, what have we done? Yeah, at the beginning. I have shown you how you can statically create a vector. Yeah, with this uh, method here, of course, uh, I have shown you, or I have, I have explained you the difference between a vector and a matrix. Yeah, uh, if you like to have a, a vector in a horizontal orientation, then you have to transpose it. Otherwise, it will not recognize in MATCAD as a vector. Then I have shown you uh, how you can dynamically create some vectors. Yeah, this was a quite easy way with your vectors with some constant values or with some with the same values. And then uh, if you create a vector, the vector values with a formula, uh, then you have to uh, have to create at first a range variable, and then you can use this range variable in the formula. And uh, and this is a, a, a way how you can dynamically create a vector. Uh, then I have shown you in the second step how you can dynamically or statically add or remove values from a vector. Uh, for this, you have this static way, you have those uh, possibilities here. And dynamically, again, you need a range variable to get access uh, to your values. And then with a the formula, you can change them. Or if you want to change the size, uh, then you can use those two. Um, Built-in functions, submatrix, and stack. You find those built-in functions if you go to matrices tables tab, and then you find here the functions for matrices and vectors. Uh, a table is actually also a, a kind of a vector. Yeah, here it is. It is actually a vector. Yeah, a table. Uh, I have shown you at the end. Uh, and uh, yes, then we talked about the mathematical operations uh, at the beginning. Uh, I again I explained to you. Uh, what, uh, how you can uh, work with index? Yeah, what is a, a special index? Yeah, which only works in your worksheet. But how you can generally formulate the index if you want, then it uh, they, to make the index independent on the origin. 
in my case, it's always one. Yeah, but if you uh, use a, a normal uh, template or a normal, uh, yeah, a normal uh, a blank worksheet from MadCat, uh, like I have done here with new, then the origin is always zero. Yeah, this is that you can change this, of course, if you prefer. Yeah, but if you uh, keep it zero, then uh, you have to. Uh, change here this uh, index or you can use a general formulation uh, which works um, with one and zero yeah this is up to you then we did some operations with with vectors with, at the beginning with a vector on the scalar then with vector and vector in this case we had to take in consideration that actually madcat as the name says is actually a mathematical program and that's why uh, if you use some special operations with vectors, for instance, this multiplication, yeah, this is, has a certain meaning yeah, normally in, in mathematics and in physics. And uh, so we get a scalar at the end. Yeah, if we don't want this, then we have to may have to use the operator vectorization so that every single value that, that afterwards you have again a vector. Yeah, if you uh, multiplicate vectors with each other without, you get a scalar. Yeah, this please take in consideration. Uh, I also sh have shown you if you need this, uh, maybe for some mathematical purpose or physical one, uh, how you can make a cross product in in MedCat. Uh, then I have also shown you if for any cases you like to uh, make operations with uh, vectors which have uh, different sizes, yeah, how you can do this. Uh, for this, you, we needed a special uh, range variable again. And uh, yeah, then we spoke about some special operations with vectors, sum or product, yeah, where you can uh, multiplicate or uh, or add all the values from a vector. Yeah, and uh, again, I had to mention how you can define an index, general yeah, or special for your worksheet. And uh, this we have done here. You can also make such kind of operations independent. Uh, depending on the condition, yeah, uh, so that you can say, okay, I don't want to to sum up every value. I would like to sum up only certain certain values. This you can do with a condition, or you can do this with a range variable, or both together. Yeah, up to the complexity of your operation. Yeah, and at the end, I have shown you how you can use vectors and units together. Yeah, how you can statically. Uh, create a vector, no, how you can add a unit to an already existing vector, how you can remove a unit, it's also quite important, mainly then if you would like to export a, a vector from MadCat, maybe to Excel and so on, and you know in Excel there are your, your units, so you have to remove the unit before, yeah, and this is not so um, unimportant, yeah, so it, this, um, and this is, for instance, if you get a vector from Mad, from Excel, for instance, yeah, maybe you, in, you insert uh, some uh, values or some tables from Excel in uh, in MadCat, uh, and then you would like to add an, a unit to it. Yeah, then you can use this expression the other way around. Yeah, if you would like to export to Excel, for instance, then you have to remove the unit. Then it's, this is a nice way to do this. Yeah, uh, how you can static create a vector with a unit. Yeah, this is what I have shown you here. Uh, dynamically creation a vector with a unit. Yeah, again it's. Fortunately, this is wrong. Yeah, and at the end, uh, I have introduced the tables, yeah, which is a, a statical way to create vectors, yeah, which have a placeholder with unit. By the way, you don't have to use this placeholder if you want like to create vectors without a unit. It's also possible, yeah, using a table. Yeah, uh, so uh, you can use a table also to create. Uh, several vectors at once with the same size uh, but also without a unit just leave this uh, placeholder here empty and then you have a unitless vector okay i thank you for your attention and maybe see you in another tutorial